Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the lesson on the respiratory system. The functions of the respiratory system includes, of course, providing tissues for gas exchange between the air and the bloodstream. Every animal needs gases to help them do aerobic respiration, and we're definitely one of them. We need oxygen gas being supplied to our tissues all throughout our life, um, especially the ones that are working really hard, like our muscles and our brain, of course. So having uh, that tissue for getting gas into the body effectively and getting rid of the gas that's waste, that's very important. And along with that, the action of moving air in, uh, the inhalation or inspiration, and moving air out of the body, uh, exhalation or expiration, that's very important as well. It's a part of it. Also, the lungs, etc., protect the body from dehydration, temperature fluctuations, the entrance of pathogens. It's not, of course, just the lungs. It's a lot of the upper respiratory uh, parts, and in addition to the lower respiratory parts, are participating in this. Uh, dehydration, the losing of fluids, it doesn't just happen through sweat. Uh, you could lose fluids out of this passageway. After all, it is an entrance exit into the body. Uh, the temperature fluctuations... Uh, you don't want um, to have cold air coming in. Let's say you were in a very cold part of the earth. Um, you know, you're, you're in the Arctic and you're breathing in air that is <laughs> below freezing. Um, uh, that would be harmful to your body. So every time you breathe in air, your respiratory tract is warming that air and moistening that air so that's not as harsh to your body. And of course, the entrance of pathogens... You don't want bacteria and viruses that you're inhaling to constantly invade your cells. So the majority of that stuff that the average person inhales is not going to attack their tissues because the respiratory tract and, and respiratory system is defending your body. And of course, producing sounds, vocalization. I'm doing it right now. Uh, when I expel air across my, my vocal cords and I manipulate them in addition to uh, my mouth, tongue, etc., you're going to hear speech. So when it comes to uh, the breakdown of what's in the respiratory tract, uh, we can look at it at the up, upper respiratory tract and then the lower respiratory tract. So the upper respiratory tract uh, is going to include everything from the nose down to the throat. And so if we start with uh, our first slide here, we're going to be with the external nares. And, and that is a fancy term for nostrils. So these are my external nares. The hole that actually leads into that opening into your respiratory tract we can call the vestibule, and, and vestibule basically means like entrance or doorway, and there are other parts of the body where the term vestibule is used. Uh, so here, you know, the actual holes in my nostrils, that entrance is called the vestibule. The nasal septum, um, septum is a term used in other parts of the body as well, like there's a septum in your heart that separates, uh, for instance, the two ventricles from each other, and in this case, the nasal septum is separating the two sides of your nasal cavity, uh, where your nostrils are, and the nasal conchae. The nasal septum is partially cartilaginous, so right here in blue, this is soft bone. This is cartilage of your nasal septum, and then a little bit further back, a little uh, uh, posterior slash slightly uh, superior, you can see that this is bony. It's the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Uh, that's the, a good portion of your bony nasal septum straight back here. And then just inferior to that is the vomer bone. And then the palatine bone is another part of it. Um, so a few different bones make up the bony nasal septum. This particular image is great uh, from Gray's Anatomy. It's a, just a perfect sagittal cross section straight through the middle of uh, this nasal region. And then, of course, the nasal conche. If we were to look at other parts uh, on the sides or, or lateral to this uh, septum, the nasal conche are those twist and turns of mostly the ethmoid bone. Uh, there are a couple other bones involved, but the uh, ethmoid bone uh, is the majority of that, that twisty, turny uh, passageways leading air into the body. And along that, you're going to have the production of lots of mucus. And the mucus serves many purposes. One of them is catching dirt, catching bad stuff before it gets deeper and causing infections. When you're sick, you're going to produce a lot more mucus, uh, and that makes sense. Upper respiratory tract, number two. So if we, if we keep looking at this area in the, uh, the upper part of the respiratory system, the nasal mucosa is um, mainly in the nasal conchae region. But the reason why I'm listing it here is 
as you breathe air in and it ends up going down into the, the throat or the pharynx, the nasal mucosa not only is catching bad stuff, bacteria, viruses, et cetera, that you're, you know, breathing in, it also warms the air and moistens the air. Very important so it's not as harsh to your lungs. If you think about it, um, the, the air in this room right here and, and possibly where you're at um, on Celsius scale is probably low 20s, 20 to 22 degrees Fahrenheit scale, you know, 70 to low 70s. And that's room temperature. But your body temperature, Fahrenheit, 98 point something. Some people it's 98.6, 98.2, what have you. That's a big difference. So when you breathe in air, it warms it a bit, gets it close to your body temperature so it's not as harsh to your lungs. And of course, uh, the moistening of air, very important too. You can say that the nasal mucosa humidifies the air, adds moisture to it as you're breathing it in. The pharynx also known as the throat, we can separate into three different parts. And here they are from top to bottom, superior to inferior. The nasopharynx uh, is, is the part of the throat that's adjacent to that nasal cavity or nasal conche that you can see in here. So here are those, or at least a part of those little twist and turns of the ethmoid bone. And so that nasopharynx region is the connection where every time you swallow, you're going to get a little bit of mucus drainage. I know it's nasty, but that mucus drainage is going to go down your throat. And, and that's great in terms of protecting your body. If you're catching bacteria and viruses in the mucus of your nasal cavity, a great way to like finally kill it is when you swallow it and it goes down your throat, down your esophagus, into your stomach, the acidity of your stomach is usually enough to destroy those things. The oropharynx, oro coming from oris or mouth, oral, that's the area of the pharynx that's adjacent to the tongue. So this is the tongue, kind of a, a weird looking tongue, but that's how it looks when you have a sagittal cross section and, and it's inside the mouth. That's what the tongue looks like. And right here, that's called the soft palate. The um, most posterior or dorsal part of the palate is, is actually soft compared to the hard palate. And so the part of the throat that's adjacent to there, I mean, as you're eating something, swallowing something, that's going to be passing through there. You also can breathe through the mouth. Um, really, your nose is meant for that. Uh, if you've done a lot of mouth breathing, you've probably noticed that it tends to dry out the mouth over time. And you're also not going to get that really good um, uh, humidifying of the air that you get with breathing in through the nasal region. So that's the oropharynx. And finally, the most inferior part, the laryngeopharynx, because the larynx is right there. So here we have, uh, it's kind of like a, a fork in the road. Posterior passageway here, that is the esophagus. So when you do drink fluids, uh, swallow, like I just did, um, swallow food, for instance, it's going to go down the esophagus. This is the larynx. And right here is the epiglottis. That's going, that's a flap that's going to close on top of this passageway so that when you do swallow, you don't want fluid and, and, and food going down into your lungs. That could cause you to aspirate and cause you to uh, stop breathing and kill a person. So the laryngeopharynx is that, that lowest part of the throat that's adjacent to the larynx.